In 2021, Oppo and OnePlus announced that they were joining together to become one company, which means now that officially OnePlus is a sub-brand of Oppo. What that means for us here and now is that software is based on the same code base between the two manufacturers. So it begs the question, with software and hardware being essentially the same between OnePlus's latest flagship, the 10 Pro, and Oppo's latest, the Find X5 Pro, what's actually different between them? And which one should you buy? I'm Cam Bunsen from Pocketlint, and in this video, I'll explain all and hopefully help you to decide, assuming I can make sense of it myself. If you do like this video, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and tap the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any more. So design, and let's quickly skip through the bits that are the same first. Firstly, from the front, they're identical. There's the same screen size, the same bezel, the same curves on the glass, and the same punch hole in the display. They're even the same width. Technically speaking, the Oppo is slightly taller, but only because it has rounded edges on the top, where the OnePlus has flattened it. Apart from some minor design differences and antenna band placement and buttons, they have the same design here too. One extra button OnePlus has is the alert slider, and this is a convenient way to quickly switch between ring, vibrate and silent modes. Both even feature the same Gorilla Glass Victors on the front, but only Oppo has an official IP rating for water and dust resistance. That's IP68, which means it should be a bit more likely to survive when being dropped in water or caught in the rain. So it's business as usual on the front, but on the back, both have taken quite different approaches. Firstly, there's the materials. Oppo uses a ceramic back, which is much harder and more scratch resistant than the glass that's on the OnePlus. It is glossy though, which makes it slippery and easier to smudge with fingerprints. OnePlus went with a frosted look with a shimmering matte glass that doesn't even appear to show fingerprints at all. It's this difference in material that gives them a very different in-hand feel as well. So while they're pretty much the same size and weight, the shiny, slippery finish on the back of the Oppo feels very different to the softer OnePlus. And how about those camera humps? OnePlus took a bit of a Samsung-like approach, wrapping a big square protrusion around the edge to blend in with the metal frame, where Oppo took a more painstaking approach, moulding it from the same piece of ceramic as the rest of the rear surface. It's a lot more luxurious, but they both have their appeal, I think. I admire Oppo's approach, but I do like the way the dark glossy camera unit on the OnePlus contrasts with the green on this model. Now, moving on to displays, and we probably won't spend as much time on this as we usually would, because by and large, they're the same. They're both 6.7 inches, both Quad HD Plus resolution, and both use LTPO second generation tech for adaptive refresh between 1Hz and 120Hz. They both also support HDR10+. And they're not just similar on paper, even the tuning and the calibration options in the display settings are identical. So if you set them both to the same setting, they look, unsurprisingly, the same. We couldn't see any difference at all between the screens with them both set to 50% brightness in natural mode with maximum refresh and resolution enabled. So it's safe to say then that when it comes to displays, this is one area you won't have to base a decision on. Where you might have to make a decision is software, which sounds weird when they both share such similar software. There are differences though, at least in the builds running currently on these two phones we have right now. Both are based on Android 12, and both have the same settings menu by and large, but where the Oppo differs is in customization choices. You just get more of them. So while they both let you change icon shapes, accent colors, plus fingerprint animations and always on displays, there's a very real sense that Oppo just gives you more choice. You can make your own always on display or choose from more different options. And there's the fact that Oppo has actually adopted Google's ability to theme your phone based on your wallpaper colors. OnePlus doesn't have that, despite being run on Android 12. When it comes to speed and fluidity, there's not much separating these phones here either. They're powered by the same processor and have a lot of the same optimizations and the same fast refresh rate display we've already mentioned. That means they both feel fast, responsive, and smooth, and they'll load any game without any problem. Where they differ in our experience, perhaps surprisingly, is battery life. The two have the same 5000 mAh battery, but Oppo's consistently lasted much longer in our own usage. With moderate use, around 2 or 3 hours of screen time a day, the Oppo would often still somehow finish the day with 50% left over, sometimes maybe a little more. OnePlus, with the same kind of usage, seemed to drop more during the day. We rarely got to bedtime at 11pm with more than 40% left over. For my own personal use then, it's the difference between having a 2-day battery and not. 
Although when it comes to charging speeds, they'll both refill again quickly thanks to supporting 80W SuperVOOC wired charging and 50W AirVOOC wireless. Now onto cameras, and here is perhaps the one key area these two phones are different. Although they do both feature triple camera systems. But where Oppo has a 2x optical zoom, OnePlus has 3.3x, so you get a bit more zoom action, longer focal length from the 10 Pro. Both partner with Hasselblad for colour processing, but there is still a slight difference in how the images turn out. In some conditions, the OnePlus would overexpose slightly, with images looking a little faded, less rich and detailed. We also saw unnatural depth that was a bit too heavy. This was mostly during close-ups, where the background blur seemed to just start a bit too close to the area in focus, and a bit too dramatically, rather than blending naturally. It wasn't as heavy-handed and unnatural on the Oppo. In other instances, in slightly darker scenes, we found the OnePlus seemed to produce less noise in the shadows than the Oppo did, at least with the main camera. Oppo would sometimes introduce more contrast to make images a tiny bit less natural looking, with artificially sharp elements, where OnePlus could make things look quite natural and soft in terms of colours and detail. But neither was 100% consistent, so where one was strong, the other sometimes wouldn't be, and it was difficult to pin down exactly why that was. The end takeaway though is that they can both take good photos, and the colours are generally well balanced between all three cameras, so at least they match. And they can both take decent shots at night time too, thanks to night mode. They lifted light from even darker areas of the picture without overexposing the brighter parts, giving a good natural colour and detail despite working with very little light. You do get a bit more video chops with OnePlus though, with it offering 8K video up to 30 frames per second or 4K up to 120 frames per second. Oppo doesn't do 8K at all and only offers 60 frames per second at 4K. For video makers then, that could be one key reason to choose OnePlus over the Oppo. In the end, there may be a couple of reasons to choose one over the other. For OnePlus, of course, there's the price. In the UK at least, it's about £300 cheaper than the Oppo and you get the same screen, speed and performance, without really sacrificing much on the camera front. For Oppo, we found the battery was noticeably better, and the results from the camera were sometimes better in some instances, but not a lot. You do get a more premium design and materials though, but whether those two elements are enough for you to hand over that extra money, we're not sure. For the most part, we think you can rest easy, save some money, and get the OnePlus 10 Pro without losing out on too much. I've been Cam, I'm at Cam Bunton on Twitter. If you want to get hold of me on there, you can do. If you did like this video, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and tap the notification bell, and then you don't miss any more of our videos. I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now.